Welcome back to a brand new week. What's that, you ask? What are we reading now? Quite simply, myths, a term you may have heard before. Whether you have or haven't heard the word, there are some questions to ask ourselves. What are myths? How can you tell you're reading a myth and not some other story? What are they for? Just entertainment or something else? So many questions. So, myths. They have certain features that make them different from simple stories. You need to remember that a myth does not need to have all of these characteristics, but they always have more than one. One important feature is that they usually take place in the past. Not like yesterday in the past, but years, decades, centuries, or even millennia. Some examples, the myth of Hercules and his 12 labors were supposed to have occurred thousands of years before the ancient Greeks, who themselves lived thousands of years ago. So Hercules, as a mythic figure, took place long before recorded history. El Sombreron a myth from Mexico and Guatemala is never given a specific date, but the story is always told in past tense. A movie was made in 1950, 70 years ago, and even by that time, the story was decades old. You've likely heard of Robin Hood, a mythic figure from ancient English history who stole from the rich and gave to the poor. The first written myths of Robin Hood were written as long ago as 1400. England also has the ancient stories of King Arthur and his sword in the stone. These are to have taken place in a time so ancient that no years are ever mentioned, much like Hercules. So we've established the first feature of myths, that they always take place at some point in the past, generally longer ago than any living person. Another feature of myths is that they are used to explain things in nature. In ancient times, people didn't always understand how the natural world worked, so they invented stories to explain it. One famous example is from Northern Europe. You've probably heard of Thor. In this mythology, called Norse, Thor was a god who controlled thunder and lightning using his giant hammer. We've learned that myths often take place in the ancient past, and are used to explain the natural world, they're also used to explain human nature, which is to say why humans act the way they do. The Norse mythology example would be Thor's younger brother, Loki. He is the god of mischief and lies, and is the one who causes people to behave dishonestly. In Roman mythology, they had Cupid, the god of love. Ancient Romans used Cupid as a way to explain how people could suddenly fall in love with one another. We now move on to a fourth feature of myths. They contain supernatural events. In other words, things that could not possibly happen in the real world, such as magic spells and superpowers. For example, in the Greek myth of Atlas, an extremely powerful giant actually holds the world up on his shoulders. Scandinavian mythology contains a spirit called the Sandman, who creates dreams by sprinkling magic sand into people's eyes. Talking animals, such as the big bad wolf, are a common supernatural element in myths as well. Moving on to a fifth feature of mythology, we now look at the characters. Myths are stories, and stories always have characters. You can tell you're probably reading a myth when the characters are gods, spirits, or exceptional people. That is five important elements of myth, but we haven't covered the most important one. Most myths contain some of these elements, but not necessarily all of them. However, what is most important about myths is not what is in them, but what they're for.
Myths are to teach lessons or what is important to a culture. By looking at myths from different places and times in the world, we can learn what lessons they think are worth remembering or what those people believed was most important in life. The best way to illustrate this is to look at a few myths from American culture. There is the myth of George Washington and the cherry tree. I hate to be that guy, but this is a myth because there's no evidence it ever happened. Certainly, George Washington was real and he had a father, but this is basically a make-believe story about him. We can call it a myth because it has several of the features we've covered. It takes place over 250 years ago. That is most certainly what we would call the past, before America was even a country, in fact. The main character is an exceptional person, in this case, the first president of the United States, but importantly, in this story, he is a boy who is incapable of ever telling a lie. It also contains the most important element. It teaches what we consider to be an American lesson. That lesson is that in America, honesty is always the best, and it teaches that from the very beginning, America has valued honesty. What else do Americans value or want to teach? Let's look at another myth. What is more American than baseball? And when most people think of baseball, they think of Babe Ruth and his called shot. The story goes that in the 1932 World Series, with his team losing, Babe Ruth pointed at the outfield bleachers, indicating that on the next pitch, he would hit a home run to that very spot and win the game for the Yankees. This is also mostly fiction. Babe Ruth did exist, and he did hit a home run in this game. However, it was in the middle of the game, and there's no evidence that he knew for a fact that he was going to hit a home run and where he was going to hit it. This story contains the first feature of a myth. It takes place in the past, in this case, 1932. The second element is covered as well. The story stars an exceptional person. Babe Ruth was definitely a real person and quite good at hitting home runs. However, in this story, he is given the superhuman ability to hit a home run whenever and wherever he feels like it. Third, it contains a supernatural event. In this case, the supernatural event is the home run itself. As we covered a moment ago, in this myth, Babe Ruth can apparently hit a home run whenever and wherever he needs one. Anyone who has ever played or watched baseball can tell you this is simply not possible, even if we wish it was. Finally, it contains the most important characteristic of a myth. It shows what Americans value and what's important. In this case, Americans believe that being the best and doing great things better than anyone else is what America is all about. We will now move on to our third and final example of an American myth. This one, unlike the other two, is complete fiction and covers every single feature of myths. The uniquely American myth of Paul Bunyan, the giant lumberjack of early America. Stories of Paul Bunyan and his mythic deeds have been circulating America for well over a century, and nobody is quite sure where or how they started. Since no one knows exactly when Paul Bunyan was supposed to have walked the earth, the stories are vaguely defined as a long time ago or in the olden days of America. Second, Paul Bunyan's deeds are used to explain things in nature. One particular story details how Paul Bunyan created the Grand Canyon, while another states that the Great Lakes are his footprints. Paul Bunyan is also used to explain the hard-working spirit and can-do attitude of American frontier people. Living in what they consider to be a wilderness, they would trade stories about the spirit of Paul Bunyan to explain their desire to keep working and settling the land. Paul Bunyan's stories are rife with supernatural events. As previously mentioned, he is said to have carved out the Grand Canyon with his bare hands, and he is also said to have created the Black Hills of South Dakota by stacking up massive amounts of dirt all by himself.
Paul Bunyan is most certainly something resembling a god, spirit, or exceptional person. He and his ox companion were supposed to be taller than most mountains and able to withstand any weather or natural disaster. Suffice it to say, even the largest humans ever recorded are not larger than mountains. So what does Paul Bunyan say about American culture and values? He is often used as a symbol for early American work ethic and strength. In more recent times, he is still used as a symbol for how much bigger Americans like everything to be. We have the biggest holidays, the biggest military, the biggest movies, the biggest companies, and the biggest sports. The myths of Paul Bunyan are supposed to show how much Americans like having everything be the biggest and the strongest. Those are examples of American myths and what they show about American culture. For this week, we'll be reading and talking about a myth from ancient Greece. We will look to see how we can tell it's a myth by looking for the characteristics we talked about. We will also look hard to analyze what the myth can teach us about what ancient Greeks valued and what sort of lessons they wanted to teach. You can find this myth in your Google Classroom materials. It is called The Flight of Icarus. However, before we start reading the myth, we need to cover the critical vocabulary words in the story. This time there are four of them. Complete your Google Classroom vocabulary assignment before moving on to the story.